God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your word. I thank you, God, for the grand design, God. I thank you for showing up and showing out in our lives. For you are worthy, worthy, worthy. Holy is your name, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. I thank you for the opportunity I had this week to start going through some of the old blogs that I posted years ago. And if you listen to the blog speak on YouTube, that was recorded like four years ago. Not only was I a different person, but I think I was newly, seriously dedicated to being on fire for God. Because I had a fire type experience. My liver had died again. And so I was in the hospital. And so it was over Thanksgiving weekend. And when I, and when I reached out to what was my family, I got no response. God said, don't reach out to them no more. And I reached out to people that I knew around here. And I got no response. God said, okay. How can I he send somebody to me to tell me what do you do? What do you do? When you lost everything and you leave the hospital AMA and you're still sick. What do you do? When you ain't got nobody, you feel like you ain't got nobody to worship. With you, what do you do? God said, He told this person to tell me about you scream out help. Help me, shepherd. You scream out, help. This person said, Jamie, well, what does a sheep do when they are trapped in a pit? You scream out, help. Help me, shepherd. But here's the thing. Sometimes God would allow you to get in situations where you are all by, all by myself. Yes, sometimes we're right against situations where you're all by yourself uh, so he can have you uh, all to him. Self, to see how the word the word sound different. About I need to go, God, from being all by myself. Could you never say that I would be all by myself in your word? You said you always be with me. Never would you leave me nor forsake me. No, you would be with me always, even until the end of the earth. But I feel like going home, God, because I am all by myself. God, God said it's because I want you all to. Myself, I want you all to myself. How can I come out of high? Because I need to put a word in you. I need you to have a strong foundation. I need you to be rooted and grounded in me and the word of God. So I need you to get all by yourself. And if you don't do it, I will get you all alone. Hallelujah. Jesus was never alone because he always had God, didn't he? He was never alone because he and God were one. And still are one. When time came for him to go into the wilderness, God did not go in there with him. Holy Spirit drove him into it and then stopped at the door. Jesus went on in there after Holy Spirit drove him into it. But we know it was a wilderness situation because nobody has to be driven into something they want to go into. You have to drive me into the path market and take me to the path market the supermarket. Y'all don't have those here. You don't have to drive me through the stop and shop down the aisle. You have to drive me like that, right? You have to drive me in your car down the aisle because I wanted to go there. You have, you have to drive me into it. If you have a kid, one time you have somebody, and you have to pull them and push them and drive them into it. It's when they're screaming and they do not want to go into it. Now, I don't believe Jesus was screaming, but I believe that he did not want to go into it because who wants to go into a wilderness? God says sometimes the thing that you don't want to do, sometimes the places that you don't want to go, sometimes I tell you to say things that you don't want to say sometimes, but I cannot tell you to listen when you don't want to hear me. Sometimes it's the very wilderness things that are necessary for the necessity of me taking you where I need you to be. If it wasn't necessary, I wouldn't take you there. Sometimes we look at things and because we don't want to do it we brand it as unnecessary but God said uh, more often than not uh, you need to lift your hands and say God I will do for you the unnecessary thing God because I call it unnecessary but God may not call it that right so God I, I will do for you what I deem unnecessary I can I just in case you are calling it necessary in the heaven I will get it God hallelujah there's something of wisdom God had me do yesterday and I will say I am wise but I'll set that wisdom he had me do I covered myself hey God 
I'm getting dizzy also, you know. But I'm covering, I cover myself. How did I do it? I was talking to um, my landlord on, not my landlord, that landlord, online, on, on, not online, on the text box, right? And so while I'm talking to her, blah, 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 I told her, I said, don't take anything as far as what I am saying as condescensions upon yourself. Don't pluck her back. Blah, 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 blah. Y'all think I'm making it sound stupid because, well, it is stupid. And that's why I say it like that. But y'all think I'm making it sound stupid on purpose. No. But they, can't nobody be condescending to me. You will never hear me say, oh, they're condescending upon me. Because for me to say don't condescend upon me, I have to put them up on me. Look at the word con. And this is how you go with a bold face. Because con is indicative of a group of people. A gathering. So now, if y'all say you are the, the pastor too is condescending to me. How many pastor Tim's are there? Because the pastor too can't be condescending upon you. Unless you put him up on you. And here's the reason why it's a lie. To say the Lord rebuke you, stay with me. A condescending and then is indicative of a directioning. And in that direction, there are people sitting there, people, not persons, sitting up above you, making uh, uh, the statements that make you feel sad about yourself. See, the enemy will make a fool of you every time. He enables you, he enables you to be a neighbor every time, don't he? Neighbors name these fools. And then once you speak that, now you gotta walk that thing out everywhere you go, huh? Because you spoke out condescending, huh? So now, when you realize that or not, the anxiety in you is checking for the condescensions of you upon you everywhere you go. But don't do that to me, huh? Don't put me on a pedestal, because huh? I don't deserve to be on one. And if I'm not gonna be up on anything, I definitely don't wanna be up on you. Hallelujah. Because what happens when I say condescending upon the only people that can be condescending to me is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they're God. Three God and one person. Three God but one job. Or one one God but three jobs. How do you want to look at it? It's them. They are the creator. You've been calm if you think that the enemy can, they can set somebody above you. You are a child of God. Nobody can, can be condescending upon you. Because if I'm condescending upon you, that means I am ascended above you. Learn some vocabulary. Speak to you. Don't put nobody above you. Satan the Lord rebuke you. I can't take you off the pole that she put you on and the, the God statue that she has you in. But I won't let you put me above her. I said, why does this stink in my nostrils, God? Get it out of me. It stinketh. He said, first of all, that person was putting you in a God type situation. Watch your mouth. Use your words, but watch your mouth. You can't descend upon me unless I put you in the point of ascensioning. And who's the only person in the Bible that we know ascended? Oh, wait, wait, wait. It wasn't Allah. But God told me yesterday, He said people want, to, people want the easy way. They don't want to do no work in their life. They want the easy way. They want to run the men of God ragged. Ah, they want to run the men of God ragged. They want all the ahs. But nobody wants to say it loud. They want all the ahs. But nobody wants to say it loud. You want all the ahs, but nobody wants to say it loud. And that's why nobody get no results. When I was laying in the bed this morning, God said to me, he said, Jamie, it is vomitous. Ephesians 320 is vomitous. The English definition of Ephesians 320, the trans Translation of it is vomitious. Why? Because Paul was schooling. You think Paul was schooling Christians? Yeah, he talked to the church at Ephesus. Yes, he talked to the church at Ephesus that was not that, that he was looking to get saved. Uh, he was looking for them to come on board. Jesus on the main line. He wanted them to start singing and stuff like that, right? He wanted them to be on board with Jesus. And so what he would tell him, he gave them Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able. He wasn't calling them the God able. Because he already knew God was exceedingly abundantly. He was trying to sell God to you. To make you understand that God just thank good. I said, well, what, God, go with me, Holy Spirit. What was Jesus talking about then? Huh? When he said, none is, don't call me good, but none is, because none is good, but the Father in heaven. He said, but look who he was talking to. 
the conversation don't be conned by the enemy you can be condescending to me a converse a converse a verse implies words the con me and you having words of conversation know a definition know the dictionary know a word get to know Miriam and Webster's don't just know Miriam don't just know Webster's get to know both of them hallelujah maybe think about the thesaurus too glory be to God about he said, look who Jesus was talking to. The man walked up to him and said, Rabbi, Rabboni, Rabboni, I need you. He said, good Rabbi, good teacher. That's what I mean, good teacher. And that's what Jesus turned and said, ah, oh, but why you call me good? None is good, but the Father in heaven. What would Jesus say there? Because at the end of uh, in John, he tells me, right? He says, Greater is he that is in me than he has in the world. Right? Jesus said, Greater things shall you do. How can I? I thought that was a pity pack match going back and forth between me and Jesus. But no, you don't understand, sweetie. The moment God starts to play ball with you, he expects there to be some scoring, he expects there to be a serving. Once I serve, you bam, I'm, uh, expect somebody to score. I'm, uh, hallelujah. Jesus was trying to get us to go up with him, uh, not to stay on that same level. Uh, he said, when he said, no, it's good, but the Father in heaven, he's trying to get a response out of you. Uh, that's why he told asked Peter in Matthew 16, he said, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Uh, Peter said, I call you. Uh, come on, uh, 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 Woo, give me a wall so I can kick it. He said, I call you. Excuse me, bathroom boy. Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Peter said, I call you. Do you never know that people have said, I say? That C and say? Lily got one. The little poor thing now. And when I do it with Lily, and the thing would go to a cow. Yeah, I told y'all. The cow say, moo. So look at look at Lily and I say the cow say moo and I say moo and the Sammy got to get involved because they want in on it when there's some saying they some saying everybody wants to say some things they want in on it but nobody wants to say la when it's needed everybody wants to say some things that's what we got instead of us having chai bro we got boo because we want to chant to chant to chant to chant 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 yeah, God, what you trying to make the son of God? It automatically becomes uh, the wrong son for you. You want all the eyes, but you can't say lie. God said, I will give you all everything. I will give you all these things. Matthew 6.33, Romans 8.37, Romans 8.28, Philippians 3.14 on to Psalm 27 verse 4. And five, I got one or two. I will give you all these things to show you all you need. There's one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek for, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire and to inquire and to inquire in his temple. All you need is one thing to get all these things. What you is that you coming after the one thing. You want all the eyes. All the eyes. You can't say no lies. But you all the eyes. We go from having one all the eyes, the allies, right? To all eyes on us. Glory be to God, you are all eyes on you. You can't see, you are blind. Person comes to me. I can't hang a curtain, you see. Oh, those are my blinds. My blinds are going to stay up. That's when it went so outside with me. You look at me and say, oh no, those are my blinds. My blinds are going to stay up. Not because even if you are paying rent here, Lois. Her name is Lois. But even if you're paying rent here, Lois. What difference does it make? You are not here. Why do I have to look at your blinds? I don't care if they could be made of gold. The streets are paved with gold. The streets are paved with gold. The streets not pay with gold for me. God, the chief made me pay with gold, but God didn't make me look at him. He take my, like Lois would take me by my hair and push my face into the carpet. See that speck? See that speck to make me see what she could see. You trying to put your blinds in my eyesight. You trying to put your blind 
am I? You was blinding you to blind me to. That's why you tell me to be ready for you. And when I say no, you are confused. Not no, no, sweetie. Never be ready for you. I said, I need you to understand. Pastor Tim was on that thing, and so was she. I need you to understand. I'm sick as a dog. And I will still be doing my blog when you come. I'll make sure I'm be doing something when you come. I'll never be waiting for you. Never. I'll never be found waiting for you. That's for you. That ain't for me. Because the moment you tell me to come, which happened actually, the moment you tell me to come, at this, you're coming at this time to be ready for you when you come. I said, no, what time are you coming? Because I'm going to unlock the door and have it ready for you right now. So what time are you coming? Matter of fact, I'm just going to unlock it and take the chain off a bit. You come when you get ready. Come in, do what you got to do, and leave when you are done. Accomplish your purposes. That's what God told me to say, sir. That's the accomplish your purposes, and when you are done, leave. Don't ever tell me to wait for you. It's not that it gets her. Nobody ought to tell me to wait for them. Why? Because you got the wrong preposition. You look at me, you see me in a condition. Blah, blah, blah. I told you I am disabled, so things work certain with me, we, way with me, with my money. Right? So then, uh, you know that I'm disabled, but don't think that just because I'm disabled that I'm retarded. I will never be found in the wait for anybody. I don't wait for anybody. I don't wait for anybody. If God said it, ain't God. I'm going to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. If I'm waiting for you, that's not the meat that I'm looking for in the sandwich of the weight of the Lord. And when the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. You are not the meat ever that I'm waiting for because you cannot strengthen in my heart, blah, blah, blah. I cannot be of good courage waiting for you. I cannot be of good, good courage waiting for you. I don't serve you. I'm not waiting for you. I can't be of good courage if I'm waiting for you. Because the meat of that sandwich must be here. I'm going to have you have weight on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen our heart. You need to know your words to you. The people have you are chasing after them. Blah, blah. I could have had some small statement to, blah, blah, to have me on the tail end blah, 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 chasing you while you chasing your security camera. Absolutely not. You come here to ask so you can say, come to the property so you can see your security cameras over and over and over again but because you stay in the front room because you want to come to the bathroom you see I don't, I don't have a ceiling. I don't have a ceiling and that's okay with you. But blah, 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 security cameras. I never see my security cameras. Security cameras. You just talked to me on through the security camera the other day. So it must be okay. It is work to king. Why do you need to, why, why, why do I need to see to king your face to king? I don't want to see your face in Casey. I thought that was clever. God gave that to me this morning. I, I thought that was clever. Because he told me to tell, he said, tell her to get a face C, KC, off of Facebook and in my book. Hey, mama, get it, baba. KC needs to get her. And then, because he she told Pastor Tim, well, Jamie needs to watch what she's doing. No, no, no. The floor is shaped like an upside down view. That's why the, the drip dripped that way. But now it's coming, it came down from another place. And the same thing happened. What do Jamie need to make sure that she does now? Jamie need to make sure that she know. You need to make sure. See and say, but watch your mouth. It's very easy, right? To look at people and, uh, and, and plant them into your story. Oh God, thank you. This is not where I was going. I don't know why I'm here. It's a, whatever God says, say something, I say it. It's very easy to plant people in your story, to take them and plant them in your story. Oddly enough, if you look at the situation, um, let's see, not David Lewis. I'm looking at my, my board. Not David Lewis, Pastor Tim, not really. Um, Harmony, not so much. I say the only people on this board that I put in my story are Pastor David and, and Miss Andrea. The other people have stories that revolve around me, but I am not log logical and knowledgeable enough. Because if you post, if you put the wrong person in your story, you'll be branded a stalker. But people that I talk to during the week and I have conversation with, right? And I'm not conned by the enemy into thinking that they are condescending about me. See, here's the thing, sweetie. I can't have an even conversation with anybody that thinks I'm condescending to them. Why? Because they have made me their God. The conversation ceases then. Because I don't conversate with God. I relate. The 
only God that I have, I'm relational with. And if I'm not relational with them, I'm serving him. When at the time when I feel like I'm not being relational and open and just telling him every thought that I have in my head, I am serving him and worshiping him. I'm serving him and lifting the name up of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm lifting up his name, right? But here's the thing. I'm either relating to him or serving him. He is never at a point where I'm conversating with them. Converse uh, means I put you on my level and I converse with you. I converse. I make the verses that come out of my mouth. I put them towards you. And you put the words, the verses that come out of your mouth towards me. And because our verses don't vary upon um, a priority status, we can have a conversation. Because just like you believe in what you're saying, I believe in what I'm saying. And nobody stands up over the other person. There is no condescending within the body. There's no condescending within my body, right? Because my pinky don't rank up above my forefinger. So there's no person on this earth that I am higher than or lower than for God, the God of the word, says that he is no respecter of persons. So if he is no respecter of persons, then what makes you think that I would be? I don't even value you enough to put you in a place where I'm condescending upon you. That's a prideful statement to make, right? Because if I'm condescending on you, then I am your God and you are my subject. But I am your God and you are my subject. And to say that I'm condescending upon you means that what comes from me descends immediately, descends immediately upon you. I only know of one God that ascended. And why you for you to tell me that I'm condescending to you? You tell you put me on the same platform, on the same level with the God that ascended. He said, and I will never say this to you. Lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the earth. I cannot unless I could commission you. Don't put me in the point where I could condescend upon you. Let's have a conversation that makes some sense. If we are two adults, we should be able to talk to each other like two adults. If not, you put me in your story and you make me your security, you make me your God. I said, that's why she can't speak kindly of me. The moment she said I was condescending to her, I realized it. A couple, the Holy Spirit said a couple days ago, he said, she's made you your God, her God. She has it. She's angry because she has unmet expectations. That's what anger means. She has unmet expectations. Her expectations are unmet by you because you are her God and you did not fulfill these things for her. What she wanted to do was be able to worship you and then rub your belly like a troll to get presents from you. If you go in the church, uh, you need to be bringing back some blessings for this building. If you're not bringing back blessings for this building, then I don't know what I'm going to do. Paul said, Now unto him. You always end up angry at me if I let you put your security in me. I said, That's why she can't say a kind word to me. Because she's angry. I'm a God. That's disgusting. You must be some low level kind of person if I'm your God. I'm condescending upon you. Where are you? If I don't come to you and say, Harm- help me. What? Harmony is condescension upon me. Then the problem is not, and it's never harmony. There are a few people around me like that. And I had to cut them off completely. So that they would see I am not their God. Don't pour yourself into me. Don't single me out when we, when, if we are in... If we're praying or if we're talking or if we're doing things, don't single me out as to why won't this person do this for me or why won't this person talk to me or why won't this person be in my face. Don't single me out as a thing. I have to cut it off because if I don't cut it off, right? I can't I cannot be your security. I cannot secure you. And I don't care whether you put your security inside yourself or you put your security inside someone else. That makes you insecure. And God said yesterday, he told me, he said, Jamie, they've got one. They've got all three. Say some lies. Oh, oh, oh. Say some lies. (laughs) 
Holy Spirit tell Jamie she was prideful? Yes. Does that mean I have the trilogy? Yes. If that's what he said, then yes. If I deal with pride, I deal with anxiety and insecurity. And insecurity, that's the worst of all. There's a hole in your bucket. Dear Liza, dear Liza, because pride is insecurity. Because the moment, if you are insecure, people will, I'm telling you, why would people, people don't view insecurity the way you think they do. And insecurity is a trilogy, right, of the enemy. So insecurity is always a lie. So I was insecure. How quickly did that become viewed in God's eyes as pride? Then he's called out as king. Where'd they find him? Hiding in the baggage. In the baggage. What happens when I'm hiding in my own baggage? If you're hiding in your own baggage, I can see you. Okay, come on. Come on. You know you got your hand up over your face. Right? You say, if you can't see me, I can't see you. You know how kids do that? I put my hand up. Hi, Samuel. Okay. So put your hands over the eyes. Um, Samuel, I said hide. He don't get the premise of the game. Just because you can't see me does not mean that I can't see you. And here's the thing. Saul did not get it, right? Because his insecurity was read out by God. Other people see you as they're all so humble. You're so humble, right? And the Bible even talks about the humble thing that Saul did in the beginning, right? In the beginning, I saw was a, a humble man, uh, not, or did humble things. He's talking about the humble things that Saul did. He wasn't walking around in this grandiose stature. But Saul was not perfect because he did some proper things too. Insecurity is pride, isn't it? I'll give you an example before they found Saul hiding in the baggage who Saul traveling with his armor bearer who do you know that ain't got no pride you ever see me with an armor bearer slap me I'm gonna tell y'all the truth that woman that said I was full of the devil for 10 years I said I don't know why they keep saying I'm full of the devil I just want to I want to carry their coats excuse me I'm gonna carry the coats. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna bear their armor. I'm gonna be their armor bearer. I'm gonna just carry the Bible, carry the coats, carry. I'm gonna serve them and walk five steps behind them. That's what I wanted to do. The problem was God did not see that for me. I said, I don't know why they hate me. I just want to carry. Who? But God saw it as a more than just that, right? And not only did I want to carry, right, but I had put my security in them, right? So much so that I could not see or hear God when he was speaking. If you cannot hear God because someone is standing in front of you, you do not have a Paul and Silas, uh, not Paul and uh, Timothy, a Paul and a, a, a Titus situation. What you have is Isaiah, a Uzziah, and a God situation where the Bible says, Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and this train filled the temple now God never changed the same yesterday today and forevermore so that tells me that God was always high and lifted up so what changed Isaiah's perspective God was always high and lifted up God's always high and lifted up he's the God that sits high and looks low the Bible does say right that he said that heaven is a storm but earth is a footstool right so I keep asking God will of your feet all over me that means I got peace right but he also says about he said uh, he inhabits the praises of his people right so he comes down and makes his habit I can't tell you how he does it or he may just send his habit to dwell in my praise when I lift him up he may set his habit down here hallelujah I don't care how he does it the Bible says the Bible remember that 